What is up everybody? Sean Tubbs here with Rev Amps. I hope you're all doing well. Today I want to talk about my guitar and specifically this one, my PRS McCarty. I've had quite a few questions about this guitar so I thought I'd just do a quick video and give you uh, the story behind the guitar. So this isn't really a demo as much as it is just an explanation of how this guitar came to be. So back in I would say around 1980 uh, Paul from PRS Guitars met with Ted McCarty. Now, Ted McCarty worked with uh, Gibson in the early years. I want to say it was uh, 1948, late 40s to I think mid 60s. And he had quite a bit to do with the, the uh, design of the, uh, the Les Paul. So that's the reason this guitar is actually called the McCarty is because uh, Paul Reed Smith met with Ted McCarty. And uh, he took a lot of uh, cues and tips uh, from Ted in the design of this guitar. Okay, so this one is different than what you would normally uh, see. Uh, first of all, uh, it's not a wood library guitar. Um, it is a custom build. And uh, back when I was uh, playing for Carrie Underwood, would have been around 2012, I called PRS and uh, asked them to build me a McCarty uh, more to spec. And uh, honestly, I didn't think they would do it. So I was uh, utterly shocked and uh, blessed that they were willing to build me a guitar, much less uh, one like this one. So to start, as you can see, there are no inlays on the neck, which is very uh, unlike PRS. I think I actually heard a toilet flush when I said no inlays. <laughs> Um, but they were kind enough to do that for me. Um, the top is typically what you would see on a really nice 10 top McCarty. I would assume this one's called violin flame because it's a very tight flame. Um, I did specifically ask uh, on this flame maple top for this finish. I don't know what it's called, but I recall telling them that I wanted kind of a root beer uh, finish and it just it, it came out absolutely uh, beautiful. Now, binding-wise, that's uh, something else you're not going to see on um, typical McCarty's. I actually asked for uh, Ivroid binding, which is more typically found on acoustic guitars. And once again, I did hear a toilet flush for sure when I asked for that, but they, uh, they did it. And it came out really great. I'm not sure if you can really catch it. But it's, it's really beautiful that way. And I just wanted to do something different than just doing like a plastic binding or the typical wood binding, which is beautiful. But uh, I just wanted this one, uh, you know, to be uh, different. And it really came out beautiful. And they did it pretty much around everything, around the headstock. Uh, they bound even the, the end of the neck here with uh, Ivroid. And they just uh, did a beautiful job on it. Uh, these keys on the back, um, they didn't like this idea, and I don't blame them. They're just the vintage style Clusons, and they were a pain in the butt. I gotta, I gotta admit, I probably will switch these out. Um, but they looked cool. I wanted it to be kind of vintage. Uh, another thing you'd be less apt to see, and I actually didn't ask for it, but they did it, um, is this uh, ebony veneer on the headstock is actually. Uh, well, the fact that it's ebony is cool, but it's also not finished. It's kind of a satin finish as opposed to glossy, and it just came out uh, beautiful. Um, other than that, the specs are the same. So it's, uh, you know, maple top, uh, mahogany uh, back, mahogany neck, rosewood fretboard, beautiful rosewood fretboard. I'm sorry I've been looking into that camera because that's, sorry about that, but um, look into this camera. The pickups, because this guitar is older, I think now they're using, uh, I want to say the 58, 5816s. I can't remember what the new ones are called. This one's actually got 5708 pickups in it. They're very PAF. They're a little bit warmer, which I, I really dig. Um, and another thing I didn't ask for was the aged covers on these pickups, but they, uh, they took a liberty there and it just ended up uh, looking stellar. Um, you know, this guy's, you know, it presents beautifully on camera, but you can see it's got some pretty nice nicks in it um, just from being out on the road. Um, I played this one quite a bit on all the tours. It got uh, used probably the most on the Storyteller tour. I was I used it for quite a few songs. One was uh, Church Bells, 
um, gosh, there were a couple of ballots, all a blur now, but uh, the reason all these dings are here is because we had to do super fast changes between songs. And unfortunately, the belt pack would just kind of smack into the guitar. So it's put all these dings in it. And I guess I could send it in and have it all freshened up, but I'm just not going to do it. Um, it's just absolutely beautiful. Um, it's got all kinds of character from being a tour guitar. Um, it's certainly one of the finest guitars I own as far as craftsmanship goes, playability. Um, it's just a, a lovely guitar. And in that opening little segment where I played, I was on the neck position and the amp I used was my D20. I ran it direct into Pro Tools. Um, I used the 4x12 cab, which is the, uh, the, um, the very first setting on the rotary uh, on the front. The delays you're hearing, uh, I did those in post in Pro Tools. Um, and I did, it is the crunch channel. So that's where we're getting that little bit of breakup that I dig so much, especially on a neck position tone. So anyways, um, yeah, that's my story. <laughs> Uh, I just, you know, I thought it would be interesting for you guys to know a little bit more um, about this uh, lovely guitar. So as always, I really appreciate you tuning in. If any of you own McCarty's or just PRS's in general, I'd love to know uh, which models you guys are playing. Um, have you done modifications on them, especially have you changed things? I haven't touched uh, this guitar, but I'd be really interested to, uh, to know uh, what you guys have been doing uh, with your PRS's. Okay, cool. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.